2D drafting, you use lines, arcs, and circles to construct drawings. But in 3D modeling, it's a very different process. We take primitives, such as cubes and spheres, and then sculpt the model that we want. So here I have a 3D solid model box, and I'm going to draw a sphere on top of it. Click two points, and there's our sphere. Notice that they are separate objects. To combine them into a single object, you come here to the logical operations drop list and choose union. Union joins two or more solid objects to make a single one. So I'm going to choose the box, choose the sphere, press enter, and now when I pass my cursor over it, you see that it's a single object. You can always undo the operation with the U undo command. Once again, they are two individual objects. Another logical operation is subtraction, and this one is useful for creating 3D models that you might not otherwise be able to easily construct. So first you select the object from which you wish to subtract something, and I'm selecting the cube, and then you select the object that you want to remove from the first one, and I select the sphere. And now I'm left with a box that has a piece cut out of it. Once again, I'll press undo to reverse the operation, so I can show you the third logical operation, and that's intersection. Here NanoSoft will leave behind those solid volumes that are common to the box and the sphere. So I'll choose the box, choose the sphere, press enter, and what's left behind is an eighth of a sphere. A second way to modify 3D models is to use 2D drawings. I'm going to use the circle command and dynamic UCS to draw a circle on this 3D model. Then I use the extrude command to change it into a cylinder. Because there's some ambiguity, NanoCAD asks me which entity I want to select. I choose the circle, press enter, and then I can move it dynamically back and forth to create the cylinder. Now one of the most common operations in 3D modeling is to make holes. And so here I can use the subtraction command, select the eighth of a sphere, press enter, select the cylinder, press enter, and now we have a hole. And we can look at this hole from different angles to see in fact it goes all the way through. Here's another way to create 3D models with 2D drawings. I'm going to select the offset edge command and what it does is it creates a, an offset or a parallel copy of edges. So I'm going to select the face and now it asks me to select a loop. A loop is a series of edges that form a continuous loop. So there's one on the outside, one on the inside where this hole is. I'm going to choose the outside one and as I move my cursor back and forth the loop becomes bigger and smaller. So I'm going to click here and we now have this offset polyline. Now I'll go back to the extrude command and select that offset loop. Click on it. NanoCAD asks me exactly what I'm picking, so I'll choose the polyline, press enter, and then start moving the extrusion back and forth. So I'm going to click, say, around here. So now we have a 3D solid that is starting to look quite a bit different. Now let's look at one other command that's useful for quickly modifying 3D solids. From the 3D Tools tab, I'm going to choose Press Pull. And Press Pull lets me change the size by moving faces. So I'll move the cursor over a face, and you can see NanoCAD highlights it. I click, and then I start moving the cursor. And as I do, NanoCAD shows the original location of the face in blue, and the green line indicates how far I've moved along with the distance there in white. So I'll click there, and that's been resized. I'll press spacebar to repeat the command. This time I'll choose this face, which is parallel to the hole, and start moving the face inwards so that I then expose the hole and can see the inside of the model.